lot of tears this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, I will tell you that my job is to talk about adoption. And I want to tell you that I'm an expert in the field. And you may not think that I'm an expert. I may not look like an expert. But I want to tell you that um, in 1965, my 15-year-old mother got pregnant by a man that she barely knows. In fact, so much I have no idea what my biological father's last name is. My mother uh, put me up for adoption because her parents said that was the right thing to do. I met my mother in 2003, and last week I went to a pastor's conference on the Oregon coast, and I had dinner with my mother, and it was one of the most wonderful dinners I've had with her. Amen. Ronald Reagan said this, I see all of you here that are for abortion are already born. <laughs> I'm glad to be alive today. I'm glad to serve the Lord. So I'm an expert because I'm adopted. I'm also an ep expert because my wife and I adopted. We have four children, three of them. My, my line used to be, do you know why I got three kids? Because I didn't want four. Do you know how to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. <laughs> I have four children because that's what the Lord would have me have. And so today we're going to talk about adoption. And if we're going to ask people to not abort their children, church, if we're going to ask people to keep their kids, then we got some work to do. Right. We've seen this verse up on the screen lots today because I believe that it's not that we all stole everybody's verse. I believe the Holy Spirit is doing something. I believe the Holy Spirit is putting in our hearts. And I will tell you, two years before I adopted my child, I knew that God was going to have us adopt. There was a uh, symposium at your church, Pastor Tim, and um, it was about adopting. And I told my wife, we should go to that. And we both agreed that we should adopt. And that would be something the Lord was telling us. And then two years later, when there was an opportunity to adopt a little girl, we both knew this is what God was telling us to do. I don't think everybody should adopt. But I think that the Holy Spirit is working on some of you. And I believe the Holy Spirit is going to put in your heart. And so as we go today and you take notes, if it, if it don't stop, then start praying. And it may take two years or three years or whatever it is. But... Um, James 1.27 says, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. So all you got to do is go visit them. I mean, hey, just show up and go, hey, I'm Mike. I'm here to visit. <laughs> but that word means this, to take care of or look after with the implication of continuous responsibility. To look after, to take care of, to see it to it that no one lacks the benefits of God's kindness. I've cried a lot this morning. My mother who adopted me had three uh, tubular pregnancies. And uh, the only thing that she could do was adopt. And so they adopted my brother. They thought to themselves, we can do better. And we adopted me after that. <laughs> and I'd like to think that that's why they stopped. But the truth of the matter is the adoption agency said, here, we have a child for you. We as Christians have a history of taking care of babies. We as Christians have a history of adopting children and taking because we know what it's like to be adopted. Because the Bible says that we were adopted by Christ. During the time of the Romans, the Romans had no value to their children. They would take their born children, take them to the edge of the city and leave them. And we as Christians would go get the babies and raise them as our own. I'm going to reference a book pretty soon. And as I reference that book, one of the things that just broke my heart was that it said that people who are pro-abortion don't believe that we should adopt. They don't believe we should adopt because they believe that genetics is important. And, and I got to tell you today, is it genetics more important or being a mommy and a daddy more important? Is it more important to have a baby that's just like you or is it more important to, have, to be a mommy and a daddy? Being adopted, it has been fun for me to watch my biological family and realize, boy, those people are crazy. Really? When I met my biological mother, the first thing I told her is, uh, thank you for not choosing abortion. I knew that's what I would tell her. I knew from the time I was this tall, as soon as I understood and comprehended abortion, that this was what I would tell her. Thank you for not choosing abortion. My little girl that we adopted is now seven years old and has been listening to this controversy and wanted to know what abortion was about. 
I'm so thankful that her mother didn't choose abortion. I told my mother who adopted me, thank you for giving me a better life, and she did. I told that story on the radio station one morning and a caller called in in tears. Is that really true? Yeah. And she said to me that when her biological son found her, this is the exact words that he told her, thank you for not choosing abortion. Now my mother said, I never thought of that, but I'm thankful that she didn't. Aren't you? I'm watching, I'm watching. <sighs> Children waiting to be adopted in the United States. I was concerned about adopting a child I was 43 years old. My father was 42 years old when he adopted me. And uh, I, was, I didn't want to be old when I had kids. And uh, I, I, my dad didn't do a lot. He was a World War II veteran. He had been shot in Okinawa. He was part of the first uh, group of soldiers to go in Okinawa. And he had shrapnel in him. Could you imagine having shrapnel in you? And uh, I guess I should look over there. And, and so my father didn't do a lot of things with me. And I thought, well, I'm going to have all my kids young. And, and so then when uh, this little girl was uh, put in our life, we knew we had to adopt. And one of the things I was worried about was, uh, is, is maybe I'm taking a child away from somebody else. Maybe, maybe there's somebody else. I got three kids already. And, and maybe, maybe somebody else who needs a little baby. And I'm going to take that opportunity away from them. And then when I saw this statistic, I realized there's plenty of babies for all of us. Children waiting to get adopted in the United States. If you look in the state of Idaho, there's 330-some children waiting to be adopted in our state. That means they have no holds. That means their parents have given up their rights or their rights have been taken away. And there is no reason under the sun these kids can't have a home except for we're not giving it to them. In Washington State, there's over 10,000 children in foster care. But did you know that in Washington State there are 5,000 Christian churches? If each church would just take two kids, there would be no kids in foster care. Do you see what I'm saying? There are currently 1,818 children in foster care in Idaho. 373 of these children are waiting for adoptive families. Is God calling you to do that? Is there an empty room in your house? There's plenty of room in your heart, I suppose. Now, I don't agree with the, the positions of all these people, all right? Don't, don't bombard me and go, I don't like that guy. But let me just tell you this. Many moms have taken loving care of their babies and young children and then gifted them to another family to love and raise. These women blessed the world with Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple, Maya Angelou, Moses. you got to say it like this, so Moses. <laughs> Augustus Caesar. Helen Keller, Florence Nightingale, President Gerald Ford, Newt Gingrich, Scott Hamilton, John Hancock, Art Linkletter, Nelson Mandetta, Michael Orr, First Lady Nancy Reagan, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, Babe Ruth, Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's, Faith Hill, Melissa Gilbert, Dan O'Brien, and countless others. And as an adopted child, I used to remember that they would talk about that on television. And, and I think how wonderful it was that I wasn't the only one who was adopted. I still like eating at Wendy's just for that. Do you know that he does have a, a, a foundation, even though that he's dead, to help adopt kids? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Also, I want to tell you that Kevin Max of DC Talk is adopted. Todd Agnew is adopted. But I want to talk about something that we talked about earlier, but we don't talk about one of the players in the manger scene as much as uh, the rest of them. We talk about Mary and Elizabeth and the shepherds, but we don't talk about Joseph very much. Do you know that Joseph was an adopted father, adoptee father? That he adopted a child named Jesus. And it's a different story than the other adoption stories. And, and it was probably a lot easier in his household than it was for my mom raising me. But do you realize that Joseph loved Jesus? That he taught Jesus Torah? That he walked with Jesus? He protected Jesus as he went to Egypt as his own child, knowing full well. And so today, I hope the Holy Spirit's working on your heart. And I hope that we're looking for a place to do this. So now what? What do we do now? How to adopt a child? Now some of you now are thinking about this. Maybe I do want to adopt a child. Maybe I know the Holy Spirit's told me. Maybe I even know I'm in disobedience right now. Because there were times in those two years when I would see about adoption and I knew God had called me to do that. And knew that I would call to pursue it. But I want to tell you today that even though I didn't pursue adoption, it pursued me. 
There was a little girl that needed a mommy and a daddy. So we took her into our home. We loved her and prayed over her. Didn't know how long we were going to get to keep her. That little girl has lived in my home for over seven years. And I hated coming here today because I hated leaving her. Because I've been gone all week. So if you want to adopt a child, first thing I would tell you is there's a book that I would read. It's by Russell D. Moore, and it's called Adopted for Life, The Priority of Adoption for Christian Families and Churches. And as you read this book, you'll see that he's laid it out. For him, he has four children. Two of them are adopted and two of them are biological. And one of the things he talks about is, I can't remember which is which, but he talks about the story of going to a Russian uh, Russian adoption place and, and that these kids had just been left there. And that they, their, their bottoms were, were, were flat because nobody took them out of their cribs. They didn't cry anymore because nobody held them. They knew that the crying would get nowhere. So start out by reading Adopted for Life by Russell Moore. The next thing I would tell you is, boy, adoption is expensive. Shouldn't adoption be really, really cheap? Wouldn't it be great if adoption was like, man, you want to have a kid come live in your family? You want to save a child from a life of of being in, in foster care their whole life? Man, we'll pay you. There is a group called showhope.org. Showhope.org is a group of Stephen Curtis Chapman. Anybody heard of that guy? Stephen Curtis Chapman has adopted kids, and Show, uh, Show was the little girl. That, uh, anyway, there's a story behind that. And, but they give out grants to adopt children. They give out grants to help pay the high cost of adopting a child. They give counseling afterwards because some of these kids have had pretty rough lives, and it's going to be difficult. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy, but it's worth it. The next thing I want to talk about is that gentleman right here. This gentleman right here is a pastor. He's a pastor of a church in Redmond. He's passed away now. Um, He started a group called Antioch Adoptions. And Antioch Adoptions, when I was working at the radio station doing the morning show, came over to talk about what they were doing. And this was the time where I was struggling with, man, I, I'm going to adopt this little girl, but maybe I'm taking her from somebody else, and God is putting her in my life. And the people that came told me how many children were looking for adoption. This guy right here had a, a passion for adopting kids out in our community. And so what he did is he gave every child under 18 a dollar, every child over 18 $10, and said, take this as the parable of the talents, and we'll come back and we'll see how much money we can get, and we will use that to help people adopt kids. 17 times the money came in, and he started a ministry, and they, and they have a, a fundraiser where they start showing faces of people who are saved. But so far as we've talked about this, we really haven't put faces with it. These are babies that we're saying, saving with no names and no faces. And to be able to see that child was saved, that child was saved, that child was saved, this child was saved, will rock your world. So this is what they say, and this is from their website. How do we do this? How do we get involved? If we say, don't abort your children, what is it that we're going to do? It doesn't need to be complicated here. Some of the various things your church can do to get involved in the work and other people are doing. Antioch Adoption only works in Washington, by the way. You see the problem? We live in Idaho. What are we going to do? They say you can preach about God's heart for the orphan each year. How many in your churches hear about orphans and and, and adoption? Um, A great time to do this is in November, which is Adoption Awareness Month. Identify families in your church who are involved in adoption and foster care and minister them. In my church, I have two families who are, have uh, foster kids, and I'm sure that you do as well. How can we make it easy for them and other people to do that? Host an op- uh, Orphan Sunday. Host an Adoption Family Care Info Night. Have a small group host an Impact for Orphans fundraiser. We can raise money. If you think to yourself, ah, I don't want any kids in my house, you can raise money for people that, that do. Amen. Pray that God would raise up adoptive families from your congregation. Invite uh, Antioch Adoption or or anybody to share a a brief word with your congregation. Support them. Open up your facility for classes and fundraisers, etc. We have work to do, church, and this work involves us getting involved. We want to see abortion stop. I remember watching the prayer breakfast with Mother Teresa when Bill Clinton was president. She's like, here. And she says to Bill Clinton and Al Gore, 
If you don't want your children, give them to me. I want them. And everybody stood up and clapped, except for Bill Clinton, his wife, and Al Gore and his wife. They sat like this. Church, we have got to be the ones that say, if you don't want your kids, give them to us. We want them. Therefore, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Oh, I, like David, was conceived in sin. At a party when my mom was 15 years old. I'm a child of fornication. But God told me a long time ago, Mike, it's not where you came from. It's where you're going. Thank you.